Oh, thirsty. Thirsty chicks. Thirsty dudes. Um, what do we think about when we hear that? Um, somebody who just wants to be with somebody so bad um, that they just compromise and do dumb things to be with somebody. Um, and I know that hasn't just been me at some point. I'm sure that's been somebody else as well, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm just making sure that it's not just me. Um, and it's cool if it's just me. I, I, I would, you know, be fine with that, and I would just call all of you liars. Um, <laughs> but we're gonna be honest today. I'm gonna take you just to a place where it's just, um, just a journal entry that I, I was speaking to the Lord about. Um, you know, kind of getting up there in age. Can you guys see my face? No. Uh, now? No. Don't go to the left. Here? No. Oh, just no. go. <laughs> I don't mean to take y'all minutes, but like, I, it's imperative that they can see my face. Um, and not because I think I'm cute, but I think that... You are cute. Yeah, how about that? That's fair. Alright, cool. Um, just being a spoken word artist, it's important that you're able to see my expressions and see that I'm for real serious and I'm not playing with y'all. No, I'm just I'm kidding. Alright, um, so we're gonna get into this piece. This piece is entitled I Will Wait For You. And again, uh, I just started writing my journal to the Lord about getting tired of waiting on somebody, <laughs> waiting on the right person, the right to come the right person to come along. And sometimes we, we see a guy and he just is just, he's just he's saved and that's enough for us. Um, knowing that we have nothing in common, knowing that we have nothing even in common as far as our spiritual walk together, our purpose um, serving God together. Um, and so this was me, and um, hopefully some of you can thank you for finding some verbiage. That would be awesome. Um, big ups to the sound text for getting no love. <laughs> really quickly, you can follow me on Twitter at I am Genetics. <laughs> So we can talk about this piece later on while you do not get your phones out right now. And um, just want to stay connected, yeah? It's important that we encourage one another in this walk. So it seemed that it was cool for everyone to be in a relationship but me. So I took matters into my own hands and ended up with him. Him who displayed the characteristics of a cheater, a liar, an abuser, and a thief. So why was I surprised when he broke into my heart? I called 911, but I was cardiac arrested for aiding and abetting because it was me who let him in. Claiming we were just friends. It was already decided for me by the first day that even if he wasn't, I was going to make him the one. Because you know... I was tired of being alone, so I simply made up in my mind that it was about that time, so I decided to drag him along for the ride, because I was always the bridesmaid and never the bride. A virgin in the physical, but mentally just a grown woman on the corner, and he was tired of the wait, so I was going to make him the one. He had a form of godliness, but not much. But hey, I can change him, so I'll take him. I mean, he's close enough. Ready to sell my aorta for a quarter, not knowing the value of its use to me. Arteries so clogged with my will, it blocked his will from flowing through me. So I think Christ's blood pressure gave his heart an attack that that llama obscured vision put me flat on my back. Through my ignorance, he saw. So through my sternum, he saw it and cracked open my chest and transplanted Psalm 5110. A new heart and a new right spirit within. So now I fully understand, but yet I thoroughly comprehend how much I need to wait for you. See, the bad thing is that I knew he wasn't you from the beginning. Because in the beginning was the word and he didn't even sound or shine like your son. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks and all he could whisper was sweet, empty nothings. Which meant nothing. He couldn't even pray when I needed him to. Asking him to fast would be absurd, so forget about being cleansed and washed with water through the word. But I know you. You are already praying for me. Even never having met me, let me assure you, I will wait for you. I will no longer date, socialize, or communicate with carbon copies of you to appease my boredom or to quench my thirsty desire for attention and short-lived compliments from sort of kinders. Oh. You know he's sort of kind of right, but he's sort of kind of wrong. <laughs> his first name Luke, his last name Warm. I won't settle for false companionship. 
I will lay in the embrace of his arms, attempting to find some closeness, but never feeling so far apart because I just want to be held. Because all I got to do is say no. <laughs> no more almost sessions and almost coming close, passing wigs and buying drinks because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a flirt. <laughs> See, I'm a flirt who flirts with the ideology of, can you just tell me how much I can get away with and still be saved? <laughs> no more. I stay in my bed, alone, and write poems about how I'll wait for you. <laughs> he won't even come close. Our fingers won't even interlock. We won't even exchange breath, because I have thoughts that I've saved as, and a father that God has only equipped you to open. Mm. I will no longer get weighted down by so-called friends and family talks about the concern for my biological clock when I serve the author of time. Oh. Who is not subject to time, but I'm subject to him. He has the ability to stop, fast forward, pause, and rewind at any given time. So if we could role play, you would be Abraham and I would be Sarah. Or you could be Isaac and I could be Rebecca. A servant's answer to prayer. I am bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh, made up of your rib, Adam. And when we meet, like electrons, I will be bound to your nucleus, completely indivisible, Adam. We even speak the same math. One plus one plus one equals three. Which really equals one if you add. Mm -hmm. I said one plus one plus one equals three, which really equals one if you add. Mm -hmm. We were all created in His, in his image, but you—you you have the ability to reflect, project, and even detect the sun. If I had to explain what you look like, I would have to say you look like a star, a sun of the sun. I would gain energy simply from the light that you shine on me. I would need you in order to complete my photosynthesis. I would need your revelation, but once again from the Genesis, I will wait for you. And I will know you. Because when you speak, I will be reminded of Solomon's wisdom. Your ability to lead will remind me of Moses. Your faith will remind me of Abraham. Your confidence in God's word will remind me of Daniel. Your inspiration will remind me of Paul. Your heart for God will remind me of David. Your attention to detail will remind me of Noah. Your integrity will remind me of Joseph. Either one, take your pick. And your willingness to step out of your own will remind me of the disciples. But your willingness to love selflessly and unconditionally will remind me of Christ. But I won't need to identify you by any special Matthews or any special Marks. Because this word will be tatted all over your heart. Amen. And you will know me. And you will find me where the loyalty of Ruth meets the boldness of Esther. Where the hospitality of Lydia is aligned with the submission of Mary, which is engulfed in the tears of a praying Hannah. I will be the one drenched in Proverbs 31, waiting for you. But to my father, my father who has known me before was birthed into this earth only if you should see fit. I desire your will above mine, so even if you call me to a life of singleness, my heart is content with you, the one who was sent. You are the greatest love story ever told, the greatest love ever known. You are forever my judge, and I'm forever your witness. And I pray that I'm always found on a mission about my father's business. I will always be yours, and I will always wait for you, Lord. More than the watchmen wait for the morning. More than the watchmen wait for the morning. I will wait. Thank you.